Thank you very much for participating in today's session. We would now like to begin the media briefing on batteries and carbon neutrality. Please allow myself to introduce today's presenter, Chief Technology Officer Masahiko Maeda. Mr. Maeda will give a presentation first. Hello, everyone. My name is Masahiko Maeda, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Toyota Motor Corporation. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Today, I would like to talk about Toyota's development and supply of batteries toward achieving carbon neutrality. First, using industrial products as an example, carbon neutrality means reducing CO2 emissions to zero throughout the entire life cycle of a product, starting from procurement of raw materials, manufacturing, and transportation to use, recycling, and disposal. As you all know, the world's concentration of CO2 has been increasing since the Industrial Revolution. There is no time to lose when it comes to reducing in all aspects the amount of CO2 emitted by humankind. For the automobile industry, promoting electrification will be an effective measure to become closer to carbon neutrality. For example, according to our calculations, the CO2 reduction effect of three HEVs, hybrids, is almost equal to that of one BEV, BEVs. At the moment, because we can provide hybrids at a comparatively affordable price, in places where the use of renewable energy is to become widespread going forward, electrification using hybrids is among the effective ways of reducing CO2 emissions. On the other hand, Toyota believes that the increased use of zero emissions vehicles or Z ZEVs, such as BEVs, and fuel cell electric vehicles, or FCEVs, is important in regions where renewable energy is abundant. Furthermore, in some regions, such as South America, bioethanol has been put to practical use as a response to CO2 reduction. As mentioned above, we should focus on how to avoid carbon emissions or on how to reduce them to as become as close to zero as possible. Because the options for reducing CO2 emissions depend on the energy situation at hand, Toyota will continue to try various measures to expand the options for achieving carbon neutrality. With this in mind, Toyota is preparing a full lineup of electrified vehicles. We want to provide sustainable and practical products that reduce CO2 emissions while considering the convenience of our customers in each region. First of all, please allow me to look back on Toyota's electrified vehicle achievements to date. Since the introduction of the first generation Prius in 1997, Toyota has also introduced PHEVs, plugins, FCEVs, fuel cells, and BEVs while also improving performance. Among such, our cumulative sales of hybrids have now reached as many as 18.1 million units. Earlier, I mentioned that the CO2 emissions reduction effect of three hybrids is equivalent to the reduction effect of one BEV, and the 18.1 million hybrids sold to date are equivalent to the CO2 reduction effect of introducing to the market about 5.5 million BEVs. The volume of batteries for hybrids that we have produced so far is the same as that of the batteries installed on about 260,000 BEVs. In other words, we can say that the batteries needed for 260,000 BEVs have been used to achieve the CO2 emission 
emissions reduction effect of 5.5 million BEPs. In the future, in light of changes in the market, we will also accelerate the introduction of BEVs and plugins, leveraging the strengths we have gained through our experience so far. And we will strive to reduce CO2 emissions by increasing the selection of electrified vehicles we offer and having customers in each region choose us so that we can accelerate the dissemination of electrified vehicles. The three core technologies that support this full lineup of electrified vehicles are electric motors, batteries, and power control units. Today, in this context, regarding batteries, I would like to share with you Toyota's unique approach and the competitive edge that we have developed via the mass production of electrified vehicles. While promoting a full lineup of electrified vehicles, we have also been developing and manufacturing a full lineup of batteries. For hybrids, our focus is on power output, or in other words, instantaneous power, while when it comes to plug-ins and BEVs, our focus is on capacity, or what can be called endurance. As batteries for hybrids, we have been continuously evolving nickel-metal hydride batteries and lithium-ion batteries by taking advantage of their respective characteristics. Our bipolar nickel-metal hydride battery, which was announced this year and is focusing on providing instantaneous power, will be used in an increasing number of vehicles. For lithium-ion lithium -ion batteries for plug-ins and BEVs, we have been striving to improve both cost and endurance, and we will continue to improve them as we move forward. We are developing a further advanced new type of lithium-ion battery for introduction in the second half of the 2020s. From here, I would like to explain something that Toyota values in its development of batteries. What Toyota values the most is to develop batteries that its customers can use with a peace of mind. Especially, we are focusing on safety, long service life, and high level quality to produce good, low cost, and high performance batteries. For example, longer service life also affects a vehicle's residual value in terms of cruising range, high energy density, and high level performance are also necessary. We want to make the charging speed faster, but too fast will affect safety. Therefore, we think it is important to strike a balance between each of these factors to ensure safe use. This concept has remained unchanged since batteries were installed in the first-generation Prius, and it is the same for the batteries in all of our electrified vehicles. By applying the technology that we have cultivated through our experience in batteries for hybrids, also to the batteries for future BEVs, we believe that we will be able to deliver batteries that can be used with a peace of mind. Now, I would like to introduce three examples of the many efforts required to produce batteries that can be used safely, using lithium-ion batteries as the focus of my explanation. This is an example of ensuring safety. It is known that each battery cell shows signs of localized abnormal heat generation during spirited driving or other driving that places a large load on the battery. By analyzing the phenomena occurring inside the battery, and conducting a vast amount of model experiments, we have been able to clarify the effect of driving style on the battery as well as the mechanism of this effect. Based on the results, we have been able to detect signs of abnormal local heating of cells through multiple monitoring of voltage, current, and temperature of individual cells, blocks of cells, and the entire battery pack. The battery is then controlled to prevent abnormal heat generation. We will maintain our concept of ensuring safety, security, and reliability down to the local areas of each battery, even when it comes to BEV systems, and we will continue to refine that concept.
The second example I'd like to share with you is our commitment to long service life. We have applied the technologies that we have cultivated through the development of batteries for hybrids to plug-ins, and the batteries in the CHR BEV have a greatly higher capacity retention rate after 10 years than the batteries hitherto used in our plug-ins. Furthermore, for the Toyota BZ4X, which is scheduled to be launched soon, we have set a target of 90% endurance performance, which is one of the highest in the world, and we are currently finalizing our development efforts to achieve it. I would like to introduce some examples of the developments that we are working on to achieve long service life. From a detailed analysis of the inside of lithium-ion batteries, we know that degraded materials on the surface of the anode have a significant impact on the life of a battery. To suppress the generation of these degraded materials, we are clarifying the generation mechanism and taking measures in various aspects, such as material selection, pack structure, and control system. Careful implementation of detailed analysis and an accumulation of countermeasures has led to improved endurance performance. The third example has to do with our efforts to achieve high-level quality. If metallic foreign matters enters the battery during the manufacturing process and directly connects the anode and cathode electrically, there is a possibility of failure. We confirm the shape, material, and size of foreign matter that enters the manufacturing process and its effect on endurance, and we clarified how such would affect batteries. Based upon this, we are being extremely attentive to the size and shape of foreign matter, and we are managing processes in a way that is aimed at preventing the generation or entry of relevant foreign matters. What I have explained just now are only a few of the things that we are doing, but with this kind of steady and meticulous analysis, and with the experience gained from the feedback of 18.1 million units in the market, we aim to continue to deliver batteries that can be used with peace of mind. Next, I would like to explain the bipolar nickel metal hydride battery used in the new Aqua announced in July this year. We co-developed this battery with Toyota Industries Corporation, taking on the challenge of developing a bipolar structure, and we commercialized it as an onboard battery for driving. Compared to the batteries used in the previous generation of the Aqua, the output density has been doubled, giving a car a powerful acceleration sensation. As for batteries for next-generation BEVs, the BEV technologies that we have cultivated since our RAV4 EV launched in 1996 and the latest battery and electrified vehicle technologies that we have cultivated through HEVs or hybrids have been incorporated into the Toyota BZ4X and will soon be introduced to the market. From now, I would like to explain about the batteries of the future. To popularize VEVs, we would like to reduce costs and provide bids that at a reasonable price. To start with, we aim to reduce the costs of batteries themselves by 30 percent or more by developing materials and structures. Then for the vehicle, we aim to improve power consumption, which is an indicator of the amount of electricity used per kilometer by 30 percent, starting with the Toyota BZ4X. Improved power efficiency leads to reduced battery capacity, which will result in a cost reduction of 30 percent. Through this integrated development of vehicles and batteries, we aim to reduce the battery cost per vehicle by 50 percent compared to the Toyota BZ4X in the second half of the 2020s. Please allow me to explain the coming next-generation batteries. For liquid batteries, 
We would like to take on the challenge of material evolution and structure innovation. We will also aim to commercialize all solid-state batteries. As stated, we will develop three types of batteries, and by the second half of the 2020s, we hope to improve the characteristics of each type so that we can provide batteries that can be used with peace of mind. Next, I would like to explain our initiatives related to all solid-state batteries. We are developing all solid-state batteries to see if we can bring out the joy in such things as high output, long cruising range, and shorter charging times. In June last year, we built a vehicle equipped with all solid-state batteries, conducting test runs on a test course and obtained driving data. Based upon this data, we continued to make improvements. And in August last year, we obtained license plate registration for vehicles equipped with all solid-state batteries and conducted test drives. There are some things that we have learned during the development process. All solid-state batteries are expected to have higher output because of the fast movement of ions within them. Therefore, we would like to take advantage of the favorable properties of all solid-state batteries by also using them in hybrids. On the other hand, we found that shorter service life was an issue. To solve this and other issues, we need to continue development mainly of solid electrolyte materials. We feel that having identified issues have brought us one step closer to commercializations. The establishment of battery supply system is also important for the dissemination of BEVs. With the rapid expansion of electrified vehicles, we are working to build a flexible system that can stably supply the required volume of batteries at the required timing while meeting the needs of various customers in each region around the world. In pursuit of our battery development concept of achieving batteries that can be used with peace of mind, we will establish the needed technologies by conducting a certain amount of in-house production, and we will cooperate and collaborate with partners who understand and will put into practice our concept. We will also proceed with discussions with new partners in some regions. We are building a system with our partners that will allow us to incorporate into discussed plans the volume of batteries that will need in about three years. Within the Toyota Group, we are also working to shorten the lead time for the startup of production and to establish a system that is adaptable to change. This summarizes our development and supply of batteries by 2030. In development, we will aim to achieve a per-vehicle cost of 50 percent or less compared to now through the integrated development of vehicles and batteries. In terms of supply, we will respond flexibly to the changing needs of our customers. For example, we are assuming that we will go beyond the 180 gigawatts hour worth of batteries that we are currently considering and will ready 200 gigawatt hours worth of batteries or more if the dissemination of BEPS is faster than expected. The amount of investment in the development of battery supply system and R&D, as I have just explained, is expected to be about 1.5 trillion yen by 2030. By establishing a system for both development and supply, we will promote the dissemination of electrified vehicles, including BEVs. On the way to our goal of achieving carbon neutrality in 2050, the energy situation and infrastructure of each region, as well as the sensibilities and convenience requirements of customers, we will continue to change. When it comes to electrified vehicles, 
cars and batteries cannot be separated. Toyota, which has been committed to producing batteries within the Toyota group since 1997 and whose market introduced HVBs or hybrids alone, number 18.1 million units, is an automaker that has been working on battery development as a corporate group. And into the uncertain future of electrified vehicles as well, it intends to move forward in sure-footed steps to adapt to the future, sustainability and practically. Toyota would like to contribute to the achievement of carbon neutrality by improving its adaptability to change and its competitiveness, as well as by aiming for the fundamental widespread acceptance of ever better electrified vehicles. Thank you very much for your kind attention. From here, we would like to begin our Q&A session. I would like to introduce our uh, members who will be responding to your questions. Chief Technology Officer Masahiko Maeda, Chief Production Officer Masamichi Okada, Chief Communication Officer Jun Nagata, President of CN Advanced Development Center, Keiji Kaita. We would now like to receive questions. If you have any questions, please push the raise hand button on your screen. And when your name is called, please turn your camera and microphone on. And when I call on you, uh, please start your questions. May we ask you to keep your questions to two per person. Katori-san of Yomiuri Newspapers, please. Thank you for waiting, Mr. Katori. Your question, please. This is Katori from Yomiuri Newspapers. Thank you. I have two questions. First of all, I, we've, I just received your explanation about the batteries. All OEMs are in competition in this field. And among this environment, what will be Toyota's strength? Especially Toyota has uh, always been insisting on in-house uh, development. Including that point, can you talk about your competitive advantage? And for the all-solid state batteries, this has also been explained. Up to now, you have been saying that in the first half of 2020s, it will be commercialized. And can you update in more detail about the target date of introduction so forth, maybe roadmaps? Thank you. Thank you, Katori-san, Mr. Katori, for your question. For your first question about Toyota's has been focused on in-house uh, development uh, and, uh, of batteries and uh, about the competitive advantage. Uh, this will be explained, but, uh, your question will be answered from Maeda-san and about the all-solid state battery, about the commercialization in the first half of 2020s, what is the actual plan, including the uh, timing and schedule. This also will be responded from our CTO, uh, Mr. Maeda. Thank you. So I would like to respond to your two questions and starting with your first questions about the strength of Toyota. Maybe I can call this a characteristic of Toyota, but if you, we can go to page eight of my presentation slides. As I've explained about this earlier, for Toyota, there are things that Toyota places importance in battery development, development, and this will be the five factors, safety, long service life, high level of quality, affordable high quality products, and high level performance. For each of these factors, each of it, sometimes there is a trade-off between other factors. For example, if we try to secure safety, then the high level performance may be uh, traded off. As I explained earlier, charging time, of course, is better 
order to be fast. But if we make it too fast, then it may affect the safety side. For example, fires and also higher temperatures may be generated. That is already understood. Therefore, we are trying to strike the balance of these five key or important elements. Then the next question is how we're going to achieve that. One thing would be that the vehicle, the car itself, and the battery needs to be thought in combination. When we do the development of batteries, we have to think about how that battery will be used inside of a vehicle. At the end, it's all about how the vehicle will be used by the users. For example, how the customer will be using the car, if it is a taxi driver, if this user is going to use it as a taxi, then the car will be charged frequently, then there will be a certain temperature-wise uh, when it is used as a taxi operation. That kind of data we already have a significant understanding of, and that data will be fed back to the battery development side so that the various vehicles' usage scenes can be used to do the evaluation assessment and also designed so the data can be fed back in this development process. If we just focus solely on the batteries, focus solely on the vehicles, sometimes it will be difficult to do these kinds of approach. So the vehicle and the batteries, because Toyota is developing it in an integrated style, like two wheels on a car, uh, we are able to uh, take this approach. And this is what we are, uh, this is the approach that we are uh, taking. As you can see in this chart, the driving uh, conditions uh, what its environment, there are the various data that has been gathered. And on the other hand, what kind of input uh, condition will it mean for the vehicle? So if we do this system assessment inside of the battery, what is being, uh, what is occurring inside of the battery? This is also uh, being assessed uh, at the same time. And we do this kind of assessment and analysis repeatedly. And repeatedly we change uh, the usage uh, environment, uh, the spec condition and do we repeat this assessment and how we should improve the performance, how we should protect certain specifications, how we should uh, strike a balance in the seesaw of the five elements that I talked about earlier. As we take this approach, we are able to do the balance on a high level. Just calculating on paper is difficult and we need to at the end, steadily uh, find with the actual uh, tests and assessment and analysis. Doing this approach on both sides of the car and the battery probably will be Toyota's competitive advantage or the strength of Toyota. That is how I understand this. And this is not just for the hybrid vehicles, but for the battery EVs and plug-in hybrids. The batteries that is used here uh, is also taking the same approach for the development. And above that, for the all-solid state battery, that was your second question, I think we can turn to a different slide, page 17. So the basic battery development philosophy uh, or the approach will be the same. And for the all solid state batteries characteristics is summarized here. For example, the ion movement is fast. And another example is it has high voltage tolerance. Right now, we are trying to, uh, we're exploring whether we can use it for with high power output or use it for with a, uh, a shorter charging time. And this high output, uh, as we have experienced with the Al uh, Aqua development, using it for the hybrid vehicles will be most uh, utilizing the characteristic of the all solid state batteries. So if we apply this and adopt this for the hybrids, we think it will be more uh, useful and we can contribute uh, to the vehicles. But honestly speaking, we cannot be optimistic so much at this point of yet. There are a lot of difficulties that we are struggling with. Like I said earlier, uh, for this uh, solid electrolyte, if you use it for a long time, then we can't help uh, gap be 
being formed uh, inside of uh, between the solid electrolytes. And this kind of phenomenon has been confirmed with our uh, development process. And what we do is uh, to approach and continue the development of the solid electrolyte material itself. And this is not done suddenly. From This is the data that we have acquired and accumulated from the past development efforts. So we have gathered the data, utilized this uh, for the simulation, and tried to identify what will be the closest and, a, uh, and most uh, best uh, material for solid electrolytes. So this is what we're doing. Uh, so in other words, we're now looking for the best material to use in all solid state batteries. So we want to do this uh, as quickly as possible so that it can be commercialized as a product and delivered as quickly as possible. So this is what we are doing. I hope to receive your understanding. Thank you for your question. Thank you very much. Just one point. So in the first half of 2020, that timing is unchanged. It is true. It is not changed. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question, Mr. Katori. We would like to move to the next question. Asahi newspaper. Kondo-san, please. Thank you for waiting, Kondo-san. This is Kondo speaking from Asahi newspaper. Very nice to meet you all. Towards 2013, in your battery strategy, the accumulated uh, investment of 1.5 trillion yen was mentioned. And I have a question on this number. You mentioned that you have a strength in in-house production, and that's my understanding as well. But uh, you are collaborating with Panasonic, and you uh, launched a new company in last April. And this 1.5 trillion yen, how are you going to allocate this investment in order to secure a steady supply? And also, when you think of the transportation cost, it might be better to open and operate factories in the regions that would sell better. So from that perspective, can you give us more details about the breakdown of this 1.5 trillion? And also, the Next question is about the cost of battery, especially with the battery EVs. Then a battery is set to be 30% or 40% of the total cost, and cruising range is set to be one of the issues. And as you aim for the 50% reduction of the cost, how are you going to realize this cost reduction? Can you elaborate on this point, please? Thank you so much for your question, Kondo-san. So the first question was that towards 2030, we mentioned the investment amount of 1.5 trillion yen, what would be the regional breakdown, how we are going to use them. Mr. Okada, our CPO is going to answer this question. And regarding your second question about the battery cost reduction. How are we going to realize that? And this question will be addressed by Mr. Maeda, our CTO. Starting with Okada-san. Thank you so much for your question. First of all, I would like to answer your first question. As we explained in Maeda-san's presentation, by 2030, uh, we would like to supply more than 200 gigawatt hour, and that's going to be one number that we have in our mind as we prepare ourselves. So this number, 1.5 trillion yen, as you see in this picture, includes the supply and development. In the production and supply, we are thinking of about 1 trillion yen. By around 2025, uh, I'm sorry, BEVs and hybrid total, this number is the total of those two. And the BEV is going to be the larger one. So that is why I'm going to explain more about BEVs. But by 2025, we would like to establish 10 more new lines. And by uh, from 2026 to 2030, we would like to uh, introduce uh, 10 lines per year. So that's going to be a total of 70 lines for BEV. 
And to realize this, one trillion yen of investment is for the production equipment, so the lines. Other than that, building is included also. But uh, this one trillion yen are for the production lines. And regarding this number of one trillion yen, as was explained by Mr. Maeda, we would like to uh, pursue small uh, base units. In other words, small investments and also the production units of each line should be suppressed. And also the manpower should be also kept small. And also uh, lead time in introducing lines should be short. In other words, the in accordance of needs, we would like to be responding with the speed and flexibility. And even with a small amount of supply, we want to be competitiveness. We would like to be competitive. So that's how we are planning to create those small lines. In other words, the investments for those lines uh, will be based upon our uh, technologies to create lines for the hybrid production. Uh, we will be able to cut down those investments on lines. And the total uh, investments for those capitals will also be suppressed accordingly. That is why uh, this amount uh, would enable us to uh, come up with this 200 gigawatt hour. And of course, uh, in-house production at Toyota or within the group, on top of those in-house uh, battery production team, we will work together with partners. We have uh, uh, many of such partners. And as uh, uh, Mr. Kondo mentioned, we would like to localize production and, and supply to the local area as a principle. And we'd like to work with partners who are good in those regions. And we would like to follow the schedule that we mentioned, basically, and are discussing with partners in how to go about from here on. Next, from myself, Maeda, I would like to respond to your second question about uh, how specifically we plan to reduce the cost of batteries. So if we can turn to slide page 15. In the earlier presentation, I did uh, mention a little about this. I'm sorry that the slide is busy, a little difficult to see. But if I can analyze this uh, or explain this uh, further in detail, like I explained, earlier, the battery is uh, independently and the vehicle itself, uh, it will be approached uh, together, an integrated development will be, uh, approach will be made. And for the battery, the cost, uh, we try to change uh, the materials so that it can reduce cost. For example, cobalt that is used for electrodes and nickel and other new uh, types of uh, poles uh, are going to be uh, explored. And for this battery development, a uh, battery and material development is also being worked on, so we will be exploring uh, to select and also to develop new materials. Also, uh, structures will be important, a structure that will allow easy assembling of the batteries. That is also another uh, possibility. And another perspective is to take a, a structure that is in integration with the vehicle. The battery pack is now used, and that will be independent of the vehicle structure. If that's the case, then then it, it, we can think take an integrated approach where it will it, it can be a packless structure uh, as an option for the battery structure. Another thing is for battery controls to look further into detail of the battery structure. There may be areas that we haven't used the full potential. How much we can utilize that uh, like for the long service life uh, will be one possibility. As you all will know, if we the battery will not be used uh, full of charge, one hundred percent charge. So then how much uh, will be the appropriate uh, percentage of charging in balance uh, with the degradation of a battery? So this is something we also would like to explore. What will be, what will be the best level of charging? And uh, that will be an approach taken to the battery uh, as a, uh, individually. 
And the vehicle side will also be important too. As you know, the electrified vehicle will use energy in acceleration, and that energy will be uh, collected with the regenerative brakes when decelerating. So the, uh, the, the driving uh, uh, resistance, uh, that will be the rolling uh, resistance and also the uh, air, uh, air resistance. And other than that, inside of the unit, for example, the transaxle, the e-axle, like motors, these areas are rotating, and the resistance force can be reduced so that the acceleration power usage can be reduced, and also in the times of deceleration, the amount of the uh, energy that can be uh, recollected uh, can uh, can be uh, heightened. So to reduce the overall uh, the amount of battery that will be used uh, will be a most effective approach, uh, we believe. But there is no ma uh, mainstream answer or mainstream option that we can take. Up to now, we have been looking at aerodynamics and trying to reduce reduce the cost from various aspects, so we just have to continue this effort. Uh, if we make it more lightweight, that will help uh, to reduce the resistance for air, and also the tire rolling can, uh, resistance can be uh, uh, can be reduced, and also the dragging of the tires, even though there is no brakes applied, uh, the uh, there might be the motor uh, be affecting uh, the tire dragging, uh, the tire dragging may affect as a resistance force. So little by little, we need to work on these and make uh, small improvements, incremental improvements. And relatively speaking, uh, in one uh, vehicle, uh, uh, we do understand uh, the uh, types of resistance force. And the PC use uh, electric uh, resistance. Electrical resistance uh, will be worked on with the uh, approach to semiconductors. But other than that, the mechanical resistance reduction, like the gears uh, and also, uh, uh, va also various other uh, mechanical resistance, uh, there's many of those that we can explore. And it's not a big reduction that we can do with uh, one thing but uh, little by little with an incremental reduction, we want to add it all up to achieve a minus 50%. So maybe it's uh, in more detail than you expected, but that is what I wanted to, to your understanding. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question, Mr. Kondo. We'd like to move to the next question. From Nikkan Kogyo Shinbun, Mr. Masatoshi, please. Excuse me, Ms. Masatoshi, please. This is Masatoshi speaking from Nikkan Kogyo. Can you hear me? So in your presentation, you did talk about your strength of working to, on vehicle and battery together. And this battery from more than 20 years ago, I think it was a nickel hydride battery. And now the main line is uh, lithium ion and all solid state. And then the new generation batteries. I'm sure that uh, they are different in batteries, uh, materials. So this long-term experience, is that useful uh, for those new generation batteries and also this uh, large-sized uh, high-voltage batteries? How are you going to utilize those low experience to improve your comp competitiveness, please? And the second question is that uh, your accumulated investment is going to be 1.5 jillion yen, and, and you mentioned that uh, you are going to uh, reduce your basic units and minimize that, but the amount itself is quite large. And just like the semiconductor industry in the past, the diversification of this uh, investment could be one risk of your company management, and I would like to hear your opinion on this. Thank you so much for your question, Ms. Masatoshi. The first question about was about our long-term experience on our battery. How can that be used in developing those uh, new generation batteries, including the all-solid-state batteries? Our CTO, Maeda, is going to respond to that one. And the second question 
was about this investment of 1.5 trillion yen. And if we want, if we are going to diversify uh, this uh, uh, investment, could that be a risk for the company management? And if so, how do we think about this? And Mr. Okada, our CPO, is going to answer this question. Starting with Maeda san. Thank you so much for your question. Well, first of all, through the hybrid in development at Toyota, our strengths that we've accumulated in the battery development, if we may elaborate, well, I would like to explain the big picture, and then the detail will be explained by Mr. Kaida later. In principle, when it comes to batteries, how do we use up all of the elements of battery and vehicles? So I'm repeating myself, but uh, how the state of the battery in the different uh, usage scenario of the vehicles, uh, we are trying to visualize those different scenarios in our development. And another one is the so-called material development. It's the chemical reaction. In other words, in the chemical world, what kind of material will be the best suit? It's not just about the performance of the batteries, but also we it would affect the cost aspect, and it would affect the deterioration, higher performance and longer service life. In all cases, the type of material being used and the usage of those batteries need to be visualized in details, and that's going to be quite important. We would accumulate those know-hows, and it's not that we would take data from the scratch every time, but those knowledge and know-how will be accumulated, and that will be handed over to the next phase of development, and we would pursue the so-called model-based development, and by using simula simulation and also in the actual vehicles, we would check them. But the usage of cars and usage of batteries, they are connected. And that is how we'll be developing in the past. And we have some materials that we can show, and Mr. Kaida would explain that. This is Kaida speaking. Thank you so much for your question. So the nickel hydride battery and all the way to lithium ion battery, how are we going to utilize that experience? I would like to share with you our thought and what we are developing, and I hope uh, that would help to deepen your understanding. Well, from 1997, uh, the, this battery was used in the, the first generation pre-use, and since then, batteries have to be used in sequence, so that's like a bucket relay. In other words, it will be in, a, in the sum of 100 or so. So even if one would fail, then the cards themselves would fail. In other words, we have to pursue a high quality, including the management of foreign matters. That's the learning we had. And also, we are watching different kinds of sensors, but you know, the measurement of voltage or current or temperature uh, will be important. Um, and that is the monitoring of vehicles in terms of human beings, the blood pressure or pulse or body temperature have to be measured to do a health check and make a prediction about your health condition. And this is the same for the lithium ion nickel hydride batteries too, especially for the lithium ion batteries. The movement of the ion is slow. If it's for EV, then the, the area of the electrolyte uh, will be so small, uh, so big, and there will be inequality. And as you may well know, for batteries, there will be some uh, ox oxygen on the cathode. And also, uh, if the temperature goes up, then it will be too heated on the cathode. And there is a sparking energy, too. So there are three elements uh, for the fires. Therefore, we have to be very careful in dealing with it. And some people might remember, or many of you might remember, but in 2009 and 2010, we did have quality issues. And after that, as the new challenge, the hybrid lithium 
batteries were used for the strong hybrid the first time in the world. And at that time, uh, so the President Toyota was called to the hearing the American Congress, and the message we had that back then was that Toyota would pursue safety, supply, and quality, and performance, and cost. And that was not sufficient. In other words, peace of mind, or anshin, was the most important element. It's not the uh, uh, rice bowl of convenience store, but uh, we have to produce cars as if though these are the rice bowls made by mothers. So please turn to page 24. There are many state, uh, stages of batteries, and we would multiply them in our testing and experiments for lithium-ion batteries. There are 10,000 channels in our equipment and facility, and we would use them up and do, do these experiments. And also, on page 23, one page before that, if you take a look at this, other battery makers are doing this, but in, even in the spring 8, uh, we have the beam lines at Toyota. In such a level to macro level, we are visualizing all of those steps to do a development. And what it matters is that we are doing this analysis by ourselves. And also on 20, page 25. Excuse me, I guess it's not projecting. That's okay. Here it is, page 25 and 26. Just like what you see here, we are using AI and material informatics, and also uh, data uh, from the vehicles are uh, being flown into the bench to do these experiments. And probably other battery makers are, are doing this thoroughly as well, but uh, when we make those equipment, and when we choose those uh, testing methods, we work with the uh, TCRDL and other group companies. And uh, we were uh, very stubborn about doing this in-house. And then lastly, page 27, this is the uh, patent status. The numbers of patents are shown on this page. They are publicized patents, and the numbers of patents, I think, not necessarily exhibiting our technological capability level, but at least those nickel hydride battery know-hows that we've accumulated is well shown uh, here. And I think this index is showing the accumulation of such effort. So this uh, evolution of battery technologies uh, can be used in the future plug-in hybrids and the BEVs uh, uh, battery technologies so that, that we can contribute to the car carbon neutrality in the society. Going on to the next year, next question regarding investments, I'd like to explain. So first of all, this 1.5 trillion yen investment, we do think that it's a large amount of investment. However, we want to proactively promote Toyota's electrification efforts. And in order to do that, we want to make the investments uh, aggressively. This is an area that requires our proactiveness. That's how we look at this. And when we do that, we want to use the small basic units. What we mean here is that uh, for us in the past uh, economic crisis situation, especially in the global financial crisis experience, that was a huge experience that we had. When things are growing, when our business is growing, we had, have a tendency to uh, have a big uh, setup and make investments in uh, capital and uh, equipment and facilities. But in the time of uh, the contraction of the demand, then uh, we have, in this kind of a situation, we have understood how the weakness of our company. Therefore, in times where things are growing, we it's difficult to see the risks 
in uh, beforehand, but we al always need to be aware of the risks that are hidden beneath the growth and make sure that we uh, take measures against that risk. Therefore, with this way of thinking, in wh what is necessary, when it is necessary, in the amount of necessary, is our basic concept, and that is will also be applied to our production lines too. That is uh, about uh, increasing in small basic units. And this approach it goes back to the original concept of Toyota's production line. It's not just for batteries, but for engine lines, transmission lines, we have applied the same concept too, and philosophy as well. For one production line, of course, we'll try to make it as compact as possible, but not just to increase one line uh, by one line, but sometimes we do a partial uh, increase inside of one line. So that is uh, so what we try to do is to understand when the uh, time for investment uh, is uh, coming, when it is needed, and uh, to make the uh, uh, just the right amount of investment. So this is uh, the kind of approach that uh, is unique to Toyota. And taking this approach as a result, for example, uh, if there is a certain crisis that is unexpected, and if we see the production demand suddenly dropping, even in these times, uh, in these changes, we may stop the uh, production line uh, partially, and then we can resume uh, very quickly, so we can be flexible in the operation as well. So this will help. Uh, we can do that as long as we keep our production line small. And then, as a result, uh, the management risks can be minimized as well. So this is our approach in with the, in uh, when we make the investments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Masatoshi-san. Going on to the next question. From Car Watch, Tanigawa-san, please. This is Tanigawa from Car Watch. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Your questions, please. I have two questions. So if I can turn to slide 16, there you talk about the next generation lithium batteries, and you mentioned about uh, working on the new structure. So can you, for this new structure, what does it mean more specifically? Is it about the bipolar, uh, bipolar nickel uh, hydride, or is it, it uh, it's going to be used for the BEVs, it seems, but for the all solid state batteries, you're talking of applying it to the hybrids, but for this new structure, are you thinking of introducing it to the BEVs? That is my first question. And then my second question will be for this bipolar nickel hydride battery, uh, this is a battery that is a world class uh, level battery that you've developed. And then if you've developed such a great battery, are you thinking of selling it outside of Toyota or have you received inquiries from outside to uh, purchase it? And and will Toyota be uh, working in these kinds of uh, external sales, or is it going to be sold inside of Toyota Group companies, or is it going to be just initially used for TMC? If you have any uh, sell uh, strategy, uh, uh, sales activities as uh, planned, can you share that with us? Thank you, Tanikawa-san. Your first question was about for the new bipolar battery, the new structure was explained. In page 16, it, the, it was, uh, for the new structure of the li uh, lithium ion, uh, will it be similar to to the bipolar uh, nickel hydride battery. So Mr. Maeda will explain about that. And also, are you think are we thinking about selling it outside of Toyota? And if we are, what uh, are the parties that we are considering of to uh, sell uh, these this new structure battery, uh, with the bipolar uh, batteries? And this also will be explained by CTO Mr. Maeda. Thank you. So I will be responding to your questions. If we can turn to slide 31. So this slide, for Aqua, when we made the public announcement, I used this uh, document. For the bipolar battery structure, to mention a little about the characteristics, I want to do a little review. On the left-hand side will be conventional type, the nickel hydride, and then the right-hand side will be the bipolar batteries. I won't explain the details of this diagram, but I want you to follow 
the flow of the current. The conventional structure goes through the uh, electrodes and goes uh, through a long path. But on the bipolar side, as you can see in this diagram, it, the uh, large current will be sent in a straight line. So now for output, it is uh, appropriate. So we use it, uh, this battery structure, for, park, uh, for batteries that need output. And you can see that the structure has become much more simple. And even with the number of the parts, we can reduce, uh, reduce it uh, to a more smaller number. So if we can use it for the capacity type batteries, then like you asked, uh, it can be maybe introduced to BEVs and also plugins. That's a possibility. If you ask that question about the possibility, technically answering, it will be yes. And for us as well, we have, of course, been uh, considering those possibilities. But on the other hand, as I explained, uh, if we take this uh, battery uh, and vehicle integrated development approach, which we are thinking of right now, right now, as this point of time, we have not, we are not able to make a decision now that this bipolar new battery will be used for the BEVs. We need to consider other points as well and cons understand the characteristics of the battery EVs of uh, what, and also the, the characteristics of the vehicles, whether it needs a high capacity, maybe it, it does, or maybe cost will be important than capacity. So the the target vehicle's characteristic needs to be considered. Of course, we will have bipolar as an option, but it will not be the only option that we will be pursuing. That's the current situation uh, we are in, so I hope that you can understand our situation like that. And for your second question, uh, so you did say a world-class level of battery. Thank you very much uh, for those kind words. Uh, as an en engineer who has been involved in the development of this type, this battery, we really appreciate uh, for that kind of uh, uh, a way to explain it. And the customers uh, who will be driving in cars that have those uh, batteries adopted, we hope that uh, they will have a higher uh, level of satisfaction with those uh, uh, good batteries. Uh, so in that way, the evaluation or assessment of the customers and the uh, customers who have uh, driven the car, and also other OEMs and other battery makers, if there is a, a requests or requirements uh, for us uh, to provide them with supply those batteries, I think uh, as long it might be one way for us to achieve uh, to become closer to carbon neutrality. So that kind of communication uh, will be continued, and uh, we I do think that is a possibility that we will look in if there is. So as I said at the beginning, the goal that we are trying to achieve is carbon neutrality. Therefore, for the various technologies or the various uh, materials or products that we have, if we can uh, utilize it and and uh, supply it to various uh, people, and if it helps and contributes to the uh, popularization of the, uh, the environmental technologies and, uh, and can contribute to carbon neutrality, I think that will be in our interest as well. So based on this way of thinking, if there are inquiries that we receive, uh, we will certainly be uh, happy to consider it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question, Mr. Tanigawa. We now would like to move to the next question. Mr. Kazuo Shimizu, please. Thank you so much for waiting, Mr. Shimizu. Hello, this is Kazuo Shimizu. I have two questions. This might overlap with previous questions, but uh, when it comes to chemical reaction, I always think of the airbags and the ammonium. But uh, at that time, in order to penetrate and commonize the airbag, the chemical uh, acceleration test probably was not done enough. I think that was my impression. And this time with the lithium ion battery, Rather than learning from your own investments, but rather by simulating the predicted risk, by doing the accelerated deterioration test, and because users have different usage patterns, the life uh, expectation would be set at the different lengths in your test and so on, and by doing so, you will probably 
make prediction and also standardize uh, those uh, service life in society and in the industry rather. And also the second question was that as Mr. Maeda mentioned, if it is the integrated development between battery and vehicle, I think by using the electrified uh, drive, um, maybe you have other advantage like the low gravity and low moment or it, when you are in the rally race, you probably have a better advantage. I'm sure that you need some other merits, just not the carbon neutrality. Unless the users want a particular car, then the EVs would not be popularized. So, uh, by what is the advantage of uh, uh, the popularization of this new types of a car? If you have some points that in your mind, please let us know. Thank you so much for your question, Mr. Shimizu. The first question about, about the lithium-ion batteries uh, service life and uh, through model life, what is our expectation for those lives? City or Maeda or Mr. Kaeda, president of the center, will answer. And second question was about the BEV's hoil base. If it is longer, if the gravity is low, the center of the gravity is lower, then what will be the merits and more advantage for those cars, then Maeda will answer that question. Thank you so much for your question. I would uh, start by answering the first question. Well, the lithium-ion batteries is not the, on the example, but uh, your question was about the example of lithium-ion battery and how we will predict the service life of those batteries. And then to use up those batteries, how are we going to tackle that? Well, I would like to refer to the slide 24. So as Mr. Kaida mentioned before, when it comes to batteries, the most fatal element is the heat and also fire. Those are the things that we absolutely need to prevent in terms of deterioration. And to prevent them, we do all sorts of investigation and research beforehand. And for that, uh, we are doing a monitoring and surveillance of batteries. And this page is talking about the longer service life. But uh, uh, in principle, what is happening inside a battery uh, should be monitored and grasped uh, in the unit of battery alone. So temp temperature or the charging volume or the current and deterioration are the elements. And in accordance of each element, and the element of the car that decides the, those each element of this battery, and it is a multiplication, but uh, we have to identify each one of those scenarios when the car is used in this case, then temperature of this, and then the, this, these will be the different scenarios of charging and the, the usage of battery and the acceleration of the driver is such and five, five years ahead and 10 years ahead. And those will be all different elements of the battery usage, when we evaluate the environment condition of batteries, we have to identify and evaluate each one of them. And we were doing that, and then I'm going to refer to page 25. And in such a detailed evaluation, and that is depicted at the top of this page, and that know-how and data are being accumulated one after another as digital data. And now, with the addition of AI analysis, we are able to fill in the gap between data and we are using more simulation so that uh, we are making sure that uh, we are okay with these gaps of data so that uh, when customers use this battery, 
ということでやってきたのが今までの We should be able to secure those conditions as much as possible. And based upon this, the surveillance of control and material development have been continued. And as a result, and this is just so far, and I think we'd like to continue to do so, but in case of hybrid, we have not identified the fatal condition which would cause inconvenience to customers as of now. And we feel that is a sign that of a sign or the result of our accumulated efforts in the development, the fact that we are providing peace of mind to customers. And even when the use environment changes in the future, uh, we would need to continue to pursue those different scenarios too. In other words, from the development side, the service life of batteries and also the safety have to be secure, and that would happen at the entrance. And uh, if the life is expanded on the batteries, then how can we make a battery so that the batteries can be used up to the full capacity? And I think, as you pointed out, it's going to be a very important element. And so far, since the launch of 1997, the hybrid, even when they become the second-hand cars, because they are used in all over the world, actually the batteries have not been collected back to us so much. Maybe that's a good thing, but uh, uh, as you said, Mr. Shimizu, in the future, uh, we need to do a better job in collecting those batteries. And in order to do so, we have to come up with a certain structure. And we cannot do this alone by Toyota. So for us, we have a Toyota Tsushio within our group who are pursuing the Battery 3R initiatives, and that is part of our group companies. In other words, as a Toyota group as a whole, uh, we would like to ta tackle this issue. We have been thinking this, and we will continue to do so. We are not ready to uh, announce in details yet, but uh, maybe lease is one way, or, or collaboration with the local government is another way uh, so that we can collect batteries more. That is another idea we have in our mind, and we are discussing those things within the group. That was the first question. Thank you very much. So I think in other words about traceability and also the cooperative area inside of the whole industry will apply to this. So what about the legalization uh, movements? Well, what we understand as of now, uh, there has not been such a strong lobbying activity for this, but I, we do understand that it's necessary to have that kind of discussion. In that case, for is it will it be a high voltage law or will it be uh, a fire prevention or uh, or something else. So there will be the recycling uh, dis uh, disassembly uh, kind of process. But before that, we need to have a system uh, in how we do the recollection. Because right now, we don't see the batteries coming back to us. So even if we create a system, uh, well, we first have to have a, a system to collect uh, the recovered batteries. I think that will be uh, the first approach. And for your second question, I really appreciate uh, the question that you propose that you've raised uh, actually because of that what you've said uh, the battery EVs and plug-in hybrids uh, I do drive uh, these types of cars myself but the uh, benefits of a low center of gravity is one thing however there is a trade-off of where the car weight uh, the vehicle weight becomes uh, heavier so there this is a difficulty of uh, taking the balance but on the other hand recently the driving power being used so that the posture of the vehicle can be controlled. This is a technology. And in the times when we made the public announcement of Toyota BZ4X uh, as a collaboration project with Subaru, uh, we've announced the contents. But uh, as we work with Subaru, there are these things that is becoming uh, better understood by us. So compared with engines, the res high response motor, uh, we call it the actuator, 
these kind, these thing parts can be, uh, these elements can be utilized as to improve the cornering performance, like, and also the posture when the vehicle is driving in a straight line, and not to have it uh, uh, tilt. Uh, that that technology can be used uh, to maintain the good posture, and also using electric motor. Uh, advantage is that you don't need a propeller uh, shaft. So uh, if the four-wheel drive vehicle can be made uh, more lightweight, that is one other contribution that it can have. And another point is that the drivability off-road will be another advantage. Off-road, uh, it will be drive, uh, driving slowly, using the actuator slowly. If it's used like that, then uh, it, it tends that uh, the on off-road, the diesel uh, is more uh, somewhat tenacious uh, to uh, be used, and that is suitable, that diesel is ten, uh, usable. Uh, but uh, with this uh, on off-road, uh, it can be used for better uh, performance. It probably can be utilized uh, for a better advantage in using it off-road. The electrified vehicle's better performance off-road is another advantage that we can probably pursue. We are still in the middle of development, uh, so this is, uh, so I hope that you can understand that developments are to come. And when we have uh, new developments, I would like Shimizu-san to do a test drive with us and to uh, try it yourselves. So going forward, I hope that we can and, uh, work with you, communicate with you about those benefits as well. Thank you. I'm looking forward to that as well. Thank you, Shimizu, Mr. Shimizu. It seems that there are. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'd like to keep the uh, questions uh, to two people. Mr. Hans from Automotive News, please. Thank you for waiting. Mr. Hans, please. Can you hear me? Thank you very much. My question is about the sales units or sales volume. I'm on slide number four. By 2030, 2 million BEVs and FCEVs you want to sell. And can you sh tell me the breakdown? How much will be BEVs and how much will be FCEVs? And also, about the batteries, the new generation lithium-ion batteries. How did you? How are you going to improve the performance compared with the existing ones? How do you improve the performance? And the last question is about the bipolar uh, hydride battery. Nickel hydride battery, how many more years are you going to use them? For example, until 2030? And if so, what is your cost advantage? That's all. Thank you so much for your question, Hansan. The first question about was about the two million units of ZEV. What is the breakdown between the battery EVs and plug, uh, sorry, the FC EVs by 2030? And Mr. Maeda is going to answer that question. And the second question was about the new lithium ion battery. What kind of uh, uh, performance improvements would there be in comparison to the existing lithium-ion battery? And the third question was about how long more are we going to continue to make the nickel hydride battery and what will be the advantage for Toyota? The second and third question will be addressed by Mr. Maeda or Mr. Kaida. Mr. Maeda, please. 
Yes, the breakdown of 2 million units. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, we are not uh, clear with the breakdown yet. When we watch the situation and the status of regulation, the baseline number that we want to provide to a customer is what we mentioned in May. So the exact breakdown of this number has not been clarified, so please understand. And second question has to do with the next generation battery, and you mentioned lithium ion, and what kind of improvements can we expect out of the performance? Well, so far, when we watch the customer's uh, uh, requirements, the cost is an important, continues to be an important aspect. So we have to always think about the cost reduction, and at the same time, the peace of mind element in the performance. There, are, there were five elements to that. They have to be in good balance as we go through the development. Service life, if we want to prolong that, then um, performance has to be in match with that. And uh, we will do the development so that we can secure the safety. We have not reached a level to clarify a certain performance level, but uh, in accordance with the expected required performance, those batteries' performance will be in match as we develop them, as we keep on developing them. And for the bipolar uh, nickel hydride battery, how long more are we going to use them? We have not decided yet, and I would say that we want to use them as much as possible because the potential of the bipolar batteries is that uh, the structure are very simple. So this battery is still new, was just born. Therefore, the uh, cost has not been minimized yet, but uh, uh, the production cost and battery cost will both be reduced and in the future. And I think there is a, a potential to structurally reduce the cost. And we would like to use the advantage. That was my answer. I hope this answered your questions. Yes, your sales unit targets. I understand you cannot be specific, but uh, which is more, FCEV or BIVs by 2030? Well, when we look at the customers, it seems as if battery EVs will be more. That's what we expect. But for example, as you know, if we are going to use FCEVs for the in the market, if we want to commercialize it, if that movement is accelerated, then that percentage might be changed, and that's also possible. In other words, as of now, it does look like BEB will be more than FCEVs. EVs, but uh, it is not, uh, I don't think the condition is enough and sufficient to accurately forecast our percentage in 2030, but uh, rather we want to be very close, we want to be closely watching the customer's requirements and needs uh, so that in order to do so, we have to be sensible and continue with the dialogue with customers. And that is going to be more important. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hans. We'll go on to the next question. Mr. Naoto Ikeda, please.
お待たせいたしましたはいお願いいたします Thank you please This is Naoto Ikeda speaking Thank you Today your presentation was rich of information and as I was listening I was uh, making a lot of uh, assumptions and hypotheses so probably before my question I, you, I need to explain about my hypothesis in 2030 200 gigawatt hour is what you're going to prepare for I think it's a very attractive target that you've set and when that happens Probably the most battery capacity consuming vehicle will be the BEVs, the BEVs. The nickel hydride or lithium ion batteries both will probably be increasing. So that will be the, the premise. And then thinking about the lithium batteries, for a, pre, a pure lithium metal battery, will be uh, there will be some dangers. And therefore, uh, the, there is a stabilizing metal that will be used. Uh, in the lithium batteries, but that will be reduced in the future. And of course, you need to balance that with the safety features. Then what are you going to be using it instead of lithium? A similar metal will probably be the irons and the uh, phosphate uh, ferrous uh, battery uh, is something that uh, is being talked about recently. So uh, is that uh, the, uh, is that what you're looking at or is there something better? Is there another better candidate? That will be my first question. Then my next question is, saying that the lithium-ion battery, if there is going to be a larger volume, then the electricity is going to be uh, passed on with the lithium, so you can never have zero lithium. But how is lithium going to be secured? So this is a analogy, but when you need to eat a lot of rice, you can't just prepare the rice cooker uh, and have enough rice cookers. You need to have the rice itself too. Uh, even if you create the factories, the nickel needs to be secured as well because it will be the materials to make the batteries. If it's iron, maybe there's no problem, but if you're going to use something other than iron, then how are you going to procure that material? So this big picture of uh, purchasing or procurement needs to be understood in order to, for your presentation to be convincing. That's what I felt. And probably there are many difficult things to say here, but if you can e just uh, explain about uh, a, the outline, uh, uh, just the outline may be helpful in understanding. Thank you very much, uh, Ikeda-san. For your first question was about uh, lithium. Uh, in order to reduce the risks of the lithium battery, the nickel cobalt uh, should be reduced uh, as a material, but instead another uh, iron phosphate uh, will be uh, used. Uh, so uh, that may be an option uh, that's being talked about. So how does there to think about that? And um, CTO, Mr. Maeda, will respond to that first question. And uh, including lithium, about uh, resources. Uh, when we are increasing the volume, how are we going to secure the resources? And what if Toyota can explain a big picture strategy uh, that would be appreciated? I think that's your second question. So, uh, Mr. Maeda, Mr. Okada, if there's any uh, things that can be explained, they will they will respond. Thank you for your question. So always you give us uh, sharp questions. And for the iron phosphate, it's not that we completely are ignoring that option. Iron phosphate is also one of the candidates uh, that uh, that one of the options that we will consider as we promote our development activities. But at this point of time, what we can say is that well, we can at this point of time, what I can say is that we are not focused on uh, iron phosphate uh, uh, against other uh, options. So inside of the same lithium, how to reduce the amount of lithium used for batteries, we need to look at the base uh, uh, base vehicle uh, to make improvements uh, to reduce the amount of lithium that we are using now. Uh, that is not the main approach, but uh, I think that is what we need to uh, focus on right now. And of course, there are makers who are utilizing iron phosphate 
are ready. So we have started conversations. And so for Toyota, if we have adopted that for our development, we are going to, uh, it doesn't mean that we are not uh, including that in our development activities. So we will be watching the movements uh, in the society. And if for the requirement uh, of the structural uh, side uh, is something that we are focusing on too. Before, in the past, the horsepower was the main factor to determine the competition. And, and the actual requirement was for higher horse horsepower. But it shouldn't be, it sometimes that will be used uh, too much uh, for the competition. And it, for the actual cruising range that is required in US and uh, required in China, there's, uh, we feel that it's quite different. Therefore, uh, the custom, of course, the customer's uh, usage environment is very different, so that will be reflected into the different specs. So the customer's uh, con use of convenience, uh, usability will be looked at uh, to select whether uh, the lithium should be used uh, for certain markets and vehicles, and then for certain markets, um, probably iron phosphate uh, will be a better option to select. So we need to have a careful watch and be able to make that judgment. So if uh, we have a good base vehicle, then I think it can accommod accommodate uh, either option from the perspective of LCA as well for batteries. The amount uh, being reduced uh, to minimum as possible would be the best principle to follow. So in that sense, we need to take an approach from these two perspectives. So that would be the condition that we are in. That's how I understand it. So that will be my response to your first question. Did I answer your first question? Well, so you're saying that for battery, you are taking a multi-solution approach. Exactly. Yes. Uh, the needs we are watching, well, rather than saying needs, the uh, usability or the convenience of the customers are being watched, and the requirement to the vehicle from the customers uh, will always be watched in order to make that determination. Thank you very much. And also for your second question about how uh, our plans are to secure lithium. The details I think I can hand over to Mr. Okada to provide uh, additional explanation. But what I can say is that the base that we stand on is a repeatance of what I said before. For us, uh, the key is how to use the minimum material as possible to structure a battery. That will be the most important point in developing a battery. So for that, the amount, how the battery will be used, the amount of battery being used should be reduced. So with the control models, uh, we want to use up the batteries as much as possible. And also on the vehicle side, the resistance value uh, needs to be worked on to reduce so that with a small uh, power, uh, power uh, the, uh, the the performance, uh, the best performance can be achieved. So the base vehicle, the, uh, the base of the vehicle, uh, will uh, improving the base of the vehicle will be the sh most shortcut that we can achieve uh, for the benefits of the battery itself too. In the future, 10%, 20%, 30%, if the battery usage rate has been reduced in this ratio, if the power efficiency is reduced 30%, then 30% of usage of battery will reduce. That will mean that the procurement volume uh, of the material so for batteries can reduce 30%, and also that will reduce 30 per, uh, emission of CO2, and that will reduce the burden on securing uh, and procurement. So that is a point that the development side has to continue to focus on, and that is a continuous approach that we will take. So that will be done thoroughly, and so I'll ask Mr. Okada to make additional comments on how we're going to procure the resources above this approach. Yes, regarding the procurement of materials, <laughs> Well, for materials, it is a part of our battery strategy, and it's, it is a one big topic that we are tackling in a strategy. As I mentioned before, the manufacturing competitiveness, and also we need to come up with, with the lines that is uh, uh, resilient against the uh, fluctuation, and also the choice of partners in each region. Those each element of uh, uh, strategy uh, is important, and this procurement is another element. And our basic stance is that it is an area where Toyota uh, would not compete alone. We work with Panasonic. We also showed in a presentation that we have battery partners too. 
でさらに、And、at the same time, Toyota Tsushio is a trading firm, and we have such trading function. And also, the Battery Supply Chain Council is another example. And by using those frameworks and structure, and by collaborating with these partners, we want to work in team. Not alone, so that、uh, we can secure a certain volume in our procurement. And this is not a zero or hundred discussion towards 2030, but、uh, a procurement、uh, should be categorized, categorized into A, B, and C. How much have we procured for certain materials?、Uh, is there visibility in the possibilities of the procurement in certain a r e a They are being visualized. So the basic principle is that we don't compete alone, and we are visualizing the progress in procurement. That is all. I would like to know more. For example, on a global basis, there are some companies who are developing the minds themselves. And when I listen to you, you're going to work in a group. Does that mean that are you going to enter into such area, or can you disclose that or not? Well, We're not thinking that Toyota itself will develop minds ourselves, but as a group, it is one of the ideas depending upon the trend of the industry. I don't deny the possibility. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question, Ikeda san. This concludes the media briefing. We hope that、uh, we will continue to explain our initiatives towards carbon neutrality. Thank you very much for your participation in your busy schedule.